Welcome back to another episode of Rec Talk. I'm your host, Nitin Sharma, the founder of RecTools.io. As you probably know by now, RecTools is the largest global directory of uh, recruitment suppliers to your recruitment agency. We also have uh, an AI playground where you can take advantage of some AI tools that have been trained to act as recruiters or a recruitment agency and, and prompted in the right way. Uh, rather than just going on using ChatGPT, please don't just use ChatGPT. Use our AI playground, it's free. Uh, we have a free to use uh, job board that you can post on, which is optimized with Google for Jobs. Uh, over 2,000 vacancies are, are live on there. Lifetime wise, we've had over 15,000 so far since going live less than 12 months ago. So take advantage of that. We do also actually um, integrate with Idibu and with Wave Tracker. So if you are an Idibu or a Wave Tracker customer, uh, speak to your account managers. You should be able to post on our job board for free. Um, we are capping off Legends Week this week with a undoubtedly a sort of leading name in the training, coaching, L and D world in the recruitment world. My guest today is Angela Cripps, the MD and owner of Recruiting Gym. Thank you for uh, taking the time to come over and see us today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm smiling because one of my favourite <laughs> nights of recruitment ever was because of Idaboo. Really? Maybe we'll get into it. Oh, yeah. Yes, there's a story there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you, you've been doing this um, sort of coaching and L&D training gig for you know, three decades now. Mm. Life is very different to what it was for a recruiter even five years ago. When I came into the industry in 2014, um, and there's a lot of different ways to recruit and generate candidates and clients today than there were even back then, 10 years ago. Mm. So... To, what, what, what are the things that you've seen trends-wise that are, you know, are changing the landscape in kind of how a recruiter does their job? And what are just fads and trends that you think are going to drop off? Well, that's the thing. We think things are fads and trends. And then 10 years later, they're still here. We thought Twitter was a fad and a, twi- a trend. Yeah. And yet, it's one of the key places to source candidates now. I was mm-hmm. at an event um, team network yesterday. We had the one for Gabby. Press and Fifers. Oh, what gives you? Yeah, yeah. just do, 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 yeah. Boolean searches and yeah, still referencing Twitter or X. I can't call it X. No, it's Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even even the, the thing is says still says Twitter, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I dread yeah, to yeah. think if you typed X into you. I yeah, this is it. Just out of like um, sort of morbid curiosity alone, mm. I'd be like, if I type in X.com around my. I don't kid, want to know what's yeah, going to come up. I don't know what's coming up, but it definitely ain't Twitter. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Yeah, I think things are fads again, like the, the, the TikTok or well, social media generally, if you think about it, from 10 years, it's only really 10, maybe 15 at the most with LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. That's not a long time for it to take over our worlds. No, no. To, to that point. So, but there are early adopters of that tech that fire ahead. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and I, mean, I always say first to market is key. Mm-hmm. When, when you're, especially when you're trying something new, you know, first to market seem to always be the ones that outlast. Right? We've but, either got to be first or best, haven't you? you yeah. They're your two yeah, options. This is it. Yeah. This is, exactly. And I think there, there are, um, I mean, there was a post earlier on today where um, it got on, on LinkedIn and it got loads of re, re- reposts, loads of comments and loads of traction, which is great. But it's like, you know, here's a recruiter on their podcast for their, th- you know, playing to their three listeners. And it was like, oh, 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 ridiculous, isn't it? And that kind of thing. And I'm kind of like, Am I the idiot here? Because I think recruiters are missing the trick by not doing virtual podcasts, right? In their industries. Yeah. And then you've got recruiters who are like shitting on each other for like, oh, look at that guy who set up a podcast and he's only got three listeners. Who cares? That's not the reason you're doing it. No. And and I must admit, I mean, we've had a podcast for a couple of years, never really utilised it because there's so much media. But actually this year, this is now where we're focusing on it. Because going back to your question... What I've noticed that's a big difference from when I started to now is a lack of business acumen Mm -hmm. in recruiters, a lack of larger world knowledge. So they're very, very heads down, getting on with it, sourcing, sourcing, sourcing for the last couple of years, BD, BD, BD now the last year. But actually having interesting conversations with their customers, so their clients, their candidates, their colleagues, Taking it up to the bigger picture, longer term planning, all of those things are, are not great skill sets that we've got. Where, where, why is that, do you think? Because it's not part of the job role. 
at the moment. So when I started... But it wasn't part of the job role when, yeah, when I yeah. started. Oh, right? Well, maybe it had already been lost by then. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but uh, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, I would sit there with a finance director who would talk to me about how he's got a £2,500 bicycle that he you know, drives to the, the, the station and then he pays fifteen like £1,500 for the year to store it in a locker gets on the tube and on the other side he's got another three thousand pound bicycle that he then takes out and then go kind of continues his journey and i'm sat there like yeah 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 and i'm like i've now got to think about talking about cycling and how important that is and like you know and, I, and, and you start trying to kind of like if i need to and want to engage with this kind of like with this client on a deeper level than just you're hiring let me find somebody for you yeah i need to do a bit of research on like oh, why just... the fuck is somebody spending that much money on a bike yeah you know? that it means something to them my, well, my stupid ass was sat there like my car is like 1500 quid in the car park <laughs> right now and you're, t- you're telling me you got a bike locked up in london somewhere that you don't even use it's, it's... then you're like carbon fiber this that and the other. And you, you it's passion isn't to... it what's their passion what what are they interested in and therefore, yeah, let's open up the conversation. So it might be... You start talking about politics. You start talking about... Well, yeah, yeah. Think about it here. We walked in here. It's football everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And luckily, with, with a nephew playing in, in the Premier League, I've got something to say. But a lot of the time, people wouldn't have something yeah. to say. They wouldn't necessarily know. So this is where opening up your world a little bit. So we, we have helped with that because I've been thinking about it for the last six months and it's been really frustrating me and I've been talking to people and they're like you know what yeah there isn't so we used to do a, a pestle analysis every three months mm-hmm. we were only had a five mile radius so it was a local one we didn't look at national or international and therefore we really dived into politics economics um, sociological factors yeah. what's going on the technological legislative environmental pestle and it, I mentioned it to people and they're like, what's that? I've never heard, heard of that. And we did it in India in December with, with a group of 100 senior management. And, they, and afterwards they came to us and said, we've been trying to do this for the last few months. We've been looking into gathering this, but we just didn't have anything to hang it on. It wasn't a framework. Yeah. yeah. PESO is perfect. We can all, we'll have six groups, everyone will spread out and they'll be able to understand it. But I learned about that in business studies, right? Yeah. A-level business studies. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who didn't do a level business study. So it's kind of like, uh, whose responsibility is it? If you're a, 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 um, a recruiter going into a big business, so you, you, know, you kind of look to your L&D team to... I was about to say, me, I'm, I'm putting my right. hands up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's down to the, the, the people that are developing the industry to make sure that that's there. So I have now. <laughs> so new podcast out last month, second episode came out yesterday. So we're doing UK for the first six months, global for the second six months. Amazing. Thank yeah. God pestle has got six letters. Uh, <laughs> so politics was amazing. We had uh, Kate Shoe Smith from ARC who lobbies the government mm-hmm. on a weekly basis on what she, what she does. Um, and last, last month we did the economics. And so we had Marie Pegram from Recruitment Accountants. And also, and this is getting me now. Sorry, guys. See, it's the women I remember. It's the men that I forget. <laughs> no, Rohan Biles. It, it, I knew his name. It's the company name. It's Contract... Oh, okay. Compass Contracting and Employment. I can right, get yeah. that head in there. There we go. And, um, oh, fire, Firefish as well in yes. uh, the first one. So anyway, four guests, one male, one female every month. But people with a passion... For that topic, yeah, that's the key. So they've got they've got to live and breathe it. Mm-hmm. They one in recruitment definitely. One, the other one doesn't have to be. So I think in the first six months we've only got one that's not from recruitment. It's on the environmental one because they are such a passionate environmentalist. So we're forty minutes, a bit like you, delving into the topics. What's going on? What's happening? What can you use to have interesting conversations? And there's so much going on at the moment that it's... But this, this is it, right? You kind of almost feel sorry for... Because of the different formats of social media that are out there and the different formats in which information is sort of shared and thrown out there now, you do almost feel sorry for that kind of sub three-year recruiter because mm. there's just... It is information overload and there is a lot more expectation to learn and know about these things. And there's people that don't genuinely don't care about the economy or yeah. politics and... Uh, but they do care about when the mortgage rate goes up. Exactly. They do care about yeah. when they go to the pump and it makes a difference. And, and I don't know, you might have been the same as me. In my 20s, I didn't make the links. It wasn't, politics was like something over here. Yeah, Economics okay. was something yeah. over here. And therefore, it was only when we used to do the pestle analysis 
that it would we then bring it back to our clients, our candidates. How is this going to impact them? That you suddenly realised, oh my God, that new bit of legislation that's coming up in three months' time. Well, they say three months and it comes in a year mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. It was, okay, let's start talking to our clients about it and yeah. let's find out how it's impacting them and what plans they've got. And they turn around and go, what? What's this? Yeah. <laughs> Same as you yeah, might yeah, turn yeah, around yeah. and go, and then now all of you're a sudden, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then all of a sudden, you're not just that recruitment agency saying, are you hiring? No. Are you hiring? Yeah. No. Are you hiring? <laughs> yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. We're onto something here. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of minds, uh, sort of almost a mindset and um, kind of attitude shift, I think, because... Post COVID, there's been a lot of drive to either just get back to normal, or you know, um, yeah, sort of what's, what's normal? normal? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, we lost we lost sort of like track of that. And um, I, I read a really interesting article the other day, and it was around kind of like humans and human nature and how we're the only animals in the world who have this sort of like productivity cycle where if we're not being productive, we we're almost cruel to ourselves. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we're kind of constantly kind of... There's a guilt factor more. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we kind of make I'm, ourselves... I'm wondering about ants and bees, but I don't think they've got the guilt factor. No, but, but look, right, you know, yeah. and, and it was sort of like, it was kind of like, you know, you, people will say, like, oh, I ain't got time for that. Like, oh, you, maybe you should do some market research calls. Next time you do your BD calls, maybe ask about kind of certain thing that's going on in your particular sector. And they'll go, I ain't got time for that. What do you mean? Well, I'm so busy, I ain't got time for it. And it's kind of like... Yeah, but can I just stop you? Now it takes you six, seven, eight, nine calls to get anywhere with a client yeah. because you're doing short little bits that make no difference. Yeah. Can I have 30 seconds or shall I throw my nan off a bridge? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what you'd rather do than to sit there and be like, right, how can I add value? Ten you've minutes got, is all it needs with a client right. to really get somewhere. But yeah, and, and so you've, we're in this kind of like productivity cycle where we, we, we're kind of like, unless I'm doing something productive, I am not doing something. And in recruitment, we're really guilty for it because it's like, no, no, you, how does that make more money? How does that drive revenue? My old business partner used to do it all the time. You know, I'd, I'd say, right, um, yeah, we, we, I, I was, well, I was, I was with a, um, uh, a couple of lads yesterday who were setting up their own business and we were talking about kind of, uh, you know, they're going from big business to just the two of them and we're talking about how they can maximise kind of their productivity and sort of their output. And I've kind of gone, look, why don't you put a candidate registration form online? So when you're getting your candidates to register, you yeah. direct them to the website, right? So that, that way, you're utilising your website better. They can capture that information. But then when they go there, give them a pop-up and ask them an industry-related question or a, a career-related question, whatever it might be. Yeah. Gather that market research because you'll register 150 candidates by end of week two. And once you've done that, you've got 150 different opinions, which is valuable data, yeah. which you can now take to your clients and say, hey, we, this is what we do. Would this be a value to you? Do you want a copy of our report? Do you yeah. want us to send that on a weekly or monthly basis to you? Do you want to, is there anything else you want us to find out? And, I, and, and they were like, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. That, that, I, yeah, I really like that idea. That would really work in our industry for like, these reasons. And I was like, the problem you've got is the this productivity cycle, because that's not a direct, are you hiring? No. Are you hiring? Yes. Yeah. You know, because it's not a, you can't link direct revenue to that. It's, Our leaders are like, no, it's a waste of time. It's Don't the do that. Indirect, indirect activities that are so important. We did, we did research of top 100 consultants and to identify competency levels and, and create a framework and all of that. I was invo- involved in all of that. My, my team were part of it and I was part of the management one. What we found out was the top, top competency that was across the board, all 100 of them, that they were all highly skilled at was planning. Mm. It wasn't all the other stuff. It was the planning. It was taking time out. Because that's where I felt guilty as a recruiter. If I had an hour booked in my diary once a month to plan my month, my quarter, whatever, I felt like I'm not doing my job. I'm not working. Because I'm sitting here thinking. This is, this is that productivity side. <laughs> or I'm analysing. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you do. You know, I'm not doing anything productive. Yeah. You know, well, no, you are. You've got to get past I, I had this conversation. I had the, literally this conversation the other day with my wife. Because I was, she was like, um, we're on about like, you know, with this sort of a health kick and this, that and the other. And she was like, I haven't got time to go to the gym. And then she went, well, I have got time. I have got time. I'm like, That's stupid. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, motivation. right, okay. What in your day could you take out to replace with the gym? And she went, well, there's a lot of times that I just spend like kind of sitting with the kids or like, you know, just watching TV. And I was like, right, but how do you know you don't need that? Because you're not physically doing something at that time. Yeah. Doesn't mean that that's not an important part of your day. 
Because that's your time where you kind of relax, recharge. Well, as soon as I heard think, sitting with the kids, I thought, oh no, that's really yeah, good. Don't, yeah. do, don't, you don't, don't get use rid that. Of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to go to the gym. So actually, it might be that you haven't got time, or it might be that you need to kind of shorten the the productivity bits that you are doing to free up the time. But yeah, we always have this thing about like you know, no, no, no unless I'm doing something, I'm being lazy. Like, yeah. See, I'm lucky. Please. I've n- I've never had that issue because <laughs> <laughs> I I know that I have to protect. Sleep. I don't get sleep, so if I I have to take time out, I mm. have to have downtime, um, and it's always been that way. So to give an example, when my daughter was young and she, I went back to work, first of all three days a week, and four, then five. So when it got to four, I booked her into the nursery for five, and people were like, "How could you do that? Why don't you do all the rest of it?" And I was like, "Because Friday's going to be my day," and I used to go to the pictures because I love films. And I used to take myself off in the afternoon. So you'd get all your chores done on the Friday mm-hmm. and then I'd go to the pictures for two hours, go to the cinema and just relax and just embrace whatever it was at that time. It didn't matter every week. It was, it yeah, was something yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I knew, and, and I didn't feel guilty about that. People would question me and I'd go, no, because if I don't do that, I'm going to be a bad mum at the weekend. Yeah. I'm not going to be great. I'm there's going to be a, There's an air of whatever. resentment, right? And, and I think that applies in the, in the recruitment industry to recruiters who, if you're not given the time to try new things, if you're not, mm-hmm. if as a leader you're shooting down the ideas of, of your up and comers or the people that are saying to you, look, I'm on the tools, I think we need to do X, Y, and Z. And if you're shooting those ideas down, mm. they will build that resentment of, like, well, what we're doing isn't working. Or it's working to an extent. Yeah, but it could be better. It could be better. It should be better. But for some reason, you want me to, you know, your answer is just dial the phone more. And that's not an answer, you know. Mm. I've, I've just, um, this week, there's, there's this week and next week. So it's free. So go go find it. It's the, it's the Firefish training sessions of analysis to planning. Okay. Um, so again, it's about taking that time out to work out what is working, what's good, what's not. What, what, where's the trends going yeah. over a longer period of time because we are rubbish at longer term planning um, it's all here and now so the key to that is individuals taking responsibility for themselves working out okay well we've all been given a target let's say and it doesn't matter whether you're back office front office sales mm-hmm, marketing mm-hmm. whatever you'll all have objectives that you want to achieve but me as an individual I'm different to them or I'm different to them I'm better at that I'm worse at that I need to work out for myself what do I need to do? So managers saying, do 50 calls, whatever. Okay, well, one person could do two calls and make as much money as the other yeah. person doing 50 calls. Or they don't but that doesn't mean that person needs to make 50 calls no. to then, you know, X50, the number of, the volume of business that they're doing. You know, it's sort of yeah. like a, it, yeah, it's the, the one size fits all KPI is just stupid. Well, I'm going to just hold you to that because it's that's not a KPI. So the one size fits all is going to be the activities. Mm-hmm. The KPI is then the indicator of the performance that's key and therefore it's how effective and efficient you are. So the 50 calls is the activity. The three meetings booked out of it is the result. And that's why, that's why you get paid to do what you do, right? Because yeah. I can tell you working at Michael Page, 50 calls to candidates, 50 calls to clients and 10 candidate uh, registrations and 10 client meetings were our KPIs. Yeah, see, they're that, not. They weren't our activities. They the, were called our KPIs. They're yeah. on the board, see, KPI that's board. That's where it's gone wrong in our industry because people always bad mouth KPIs, but the KPI is the ratio. So 50 calls, I should have made it easier for myself, 50 calls, five meetings, <laughs> 10 to one. Okay, yeah. that's the KPI. It takes you 10 calls to get one meeting. So if you need to book however many meetings is your, your target, yeah. You need to do that many times. Volume it up, yeah, okay. and it might be interview to placement. It could be jobs on to placement. Fill rates. Oh, please, can we all work out our fill rates in the industry? Because even if you just work on that, you will make more money <laughs> without doing any more activities. It's nuts why we don't look at it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. When it's good, the people that know what their fill ratio is are the ones who have got a good fill rate. But that's because they've been working it out and they've been working on it. It probably wasn't when they first worked it out. No. Um, so just to give an well, the ones that say they don't know are the ones that are embarrassed to say it's one in six. Yeah, yeah. So like eighteen percent or so, you, like five lots of jobs that you've worked on and seen the rest of it. And if you continue to see you've not been paid for, or if you're retained, you are losing your job because yeah. you've got to be fit. <laughs> how, how have you not delivered on that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that but that is the industry because we've also got so many people up against each other. So let's say there was three agencies 
on every job mm-hmm. as, as an average. Um, well, the industry average can only be 33% because only one person's filling it out of the three agencies. Yeah. So already we've got a fill rate of an industry of 33%. And the last figures that I had were like 23%, so one in four. Mm-hmm. <sighs> not great, not great. So what's yours? And it doesn't matter where you start. Just, just work on it. Why yeah. is it? And it might be because you're taking a job fourth in line and you go actually no I'm going to walk away for that Mm -hmm. if in a month's time you still haven't filled it with those three come away we'll do exclusive and we'll have a go then but they've probably messed up the market by then yeah by that point yeah so be careful but it might be I'm not going to take those jobs where it's a unicorn that no one's got and no one can find Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. because it's just going to impact my fill rate because if if you keep coming back all the time am I actually going to fill this and if you're not sure, then do more work on it. But if it. your leader's focused on the volume of vacancies, so if that, well, that, if that business again, leader was there going, no, no, I don't care, you need 10 new vacancies You're ruining in your business. Yeah, yeah, of course you are, because then you, you're encouraging your guys to go out and find 10 unfillable jobs, yeah. because it keeps you off their back for that month, yeah. rather They'll than... They'll just take anything on. Yeah. That was me, my first ever job, 34 and whatever years ago. Um, RPG 400 programmer. This is the 80s. I didn't know what it meant. It was my first job. I was so excited <laughs> because <laughs> the average salary was eight grand You're right. that we were working on. There was a team of five recruiters, so I knew, knew the stats for all of them. This one was £25,000. It was three times everyone else. They all thought I was amazing in that first week. I'd taken this job. And things. Yeah, three months later, I still haven't filled it. <laughs> so my first job, I never yeah. filled. My first placement, she never turned up. I do know her name, but <laughs> I won't say it. So again, okay. you learn so many lessons from those mistakes. And people, I feel that, back to your question, people aren't learning from their mistakes because they're not monitoring, they're not analysing, they're not looking at the trends, they're going down the same route again. And therefore, they'll just keep repeating. So history will come back again. And the second thing that I wanted to dive into as to what's different and very different and probably only different from the last four years mm. is the opportunity to talk about mental health and well-being mm-hmm. and for people to feel comfortable to share that. Now, there's going to be a levelling. There's going to be a point where is it too much, whatever, but it was definitely way too little. And that was something, I mean, we were always told don't bring your personal life into work. And it was a big no-no, and you, if you were down, you didn't mention it, and you just cracked on. Yeah, and it was stiff leave it at the door. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And yes, it meant that we were very successful, but oh my God, the amount of people that burn out. But at what cost, yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. yeah. How much of a change have you seen in people's learning styles then? Because I, I, my, my wife is in teaching, um, primary teaching at that, and there's a lot of talk at the minute within that world. Um, you can get pestle, yeah. uh, of children being, you know, either diagnosed rightly or wrongly with things like autism and ADHD and, and sort of social pain and impact into that, you, you know, uh, iPad kids and that kind of thing. Mm. And I know that there is, I mean, Gen X are coming into the workforce now and learn very differently and micro learning is becoming a thing and, yeah. and so on. So how, how, what trends have you seen with it within that, uh, in, in our industry? Yeah, see, five, five years ago, the, the online training was pretty minimal. I can give you an example of the recruiting gym. Alex Moyle set it up, and I looked to put one of my 50, 60 courses on there as a, as a repeatable thing, um, and it was business planning for consultants. Mm-hmm. There we go. That was the first, first one that I put on there with Alex. And then I thought, okay, now there's something to this. I'd always, I'd, I'd worked with Recruitment Juice. I loved what they do. I just never really got into it myself mm-hmm. because I just felt that online learning, here you go, go and have a look at it, and away you go. It didn't sit well with me. So with the recruiting gym, looking at that, and the fact the strap line then was online learning powered by humans, mm-hmm. there was the live element to it. There was the community, there was people asking each other questions, there was support there. But, oh, okay, yeah, no, I can get I can get behind this. And then within what, two months it became a hundred percent online <laughs> when COVID hit. So I'd I'd been travelling the Far East and Australia for five years at that point, every yeah. four weeks. So I'd either go north through Dubai to Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, Japan. Um, Amazing. Yeah, yeah, China yeah. got to work in Shenzhen as well and then the other come back and then four weeks later go to Australia yeah, yeah. yeah and was loving that 
but there's there's only like you can only deliver once when when you're face to face that's it you're you're there so the online thing I thought okay yeah this this is going to be interesting and we've seen that shift so now we're back to about 50 50 Mm -hmm. but it was meant to be like 85 15 uh, more face to face but we're about 50 50 now with face to face people are using it for events they're using it not just for the training whereas no. before it was just the training now it's it's more about an add-on as a benefit values teamwork all, all extras yeah. added in yeah to it, make it, adds, it, it adds almost a, an underline towards something else right because actually their business is probably now kind of 50 50 hybrid with remote staff and that kind of thing yeah. so it's like actually there's a great way to tie it all in together mm. we'll do some l d we'll do some updates on the business we'll do some fun stuff yeah 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 turn it into something but that's that value add piece but i always find it interesting though that you've got because because there are so many different learning styles right and people are so sort of set in their ways in terms of how they do learn um what is your approach to it as a as a business? Are you guys trying to be a, for the lack of a better term, a one size fits all? So you know, sort of all things to all, yeah, all people. Or are you kind of going, no? Do you know what? What we're really good at is that face to face classroom based learning, and therefore that's what we deliver. No, we do we do because we we've, we've got what three thousand members in the gym, and they're in over a hundred countries. So there isn't a one thing. You're right. Mm. I mean, there's sort of four main learning styles. Yeah. So even when we were doing a face-to-face training, we would try and hit all four of those within the day or the the half day. Mm -hmm. And the same with the online stuff. You have to appeal to all of the different different types of personalities, whether they're auditory, visual, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. kinesthetic. Um, You've got to try and cover all bases because otherwise you lose people. And again, you've you've got to be doing this every 10, 15 minutes. So there's always got to be changes. So... If you are looking at writing training programs for your team, and we certainly don't recommend more than two hours on Zoom at a time. Mm-hmm. So that's where we've ended up. I think we've got about 65 two-hour courses that we do. Um, and then they can be combined and we'll, we'll do days face, face-to-face and yeah, probably two days at the most as well. So those trends have changed because when I started in training, we used to do a whole week. We'd do five days and the last day... Um, would be around legislation, which sounds awful. But you leave it to the last day because by that point they're all checked out and they're all tired. No, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the best day ever. Um, I went with Alan Clark. We did videos of like terrible interviews. He's an actor. So I'd interview him and we would hit all 14 at the time bits of legislation yeah. where we would balls it up and it would be wrong. And so it was a watch this 30 minute interview and see how many bits of legislation have been broken mm. so people would get yeah okay yeah that's yeah. a lot more entertaining than yeah. my legislation training at Michael Payne which oh, okay. a big thick like read this and then we're going to ask questions on it yeah no so that's that's not good I must admit <laughs> that the TOBs the terms of business was, was always a um, an interesting one because I didn't get trained on it until six years in we went to a conference like a management thing mm-hmm. and they got us to all read the TOBs <laughs> And actually highlight things that maybe are issues or how can we change them. And our table, 10 people, none of us had read them in detail, everything. And we came up with so many things. We were sitting there going, oh, my God, I didn't need to give that rebate. Oh, my God, I could have made more money here. There were things in there. So it then became part of week one training. And maybe that's something that's got missed as well. So it's like, how do I make this fun? So we'd split them into groups. They'd get the TOBs. And then they would have to come back the next day. And they have to present it. In layman's terms, because they're always written in legal yeah, so they can only yeah, yeah, take them yeah. one way, isn't it? So it's okay, what does that actually mean? And then when they presented it, they could choose a theme. So sometimes we'd have an EastEnders skit <laughs> <laughs> where they'd be sharing what it meant and how it worked. And you think, yeah, you've just got to be Brilliant. creative yeah, to, to tap into people's yeah. minds. The best one ever that we heard was um, a racing, you know, the racing commentary. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And someone could do that. So they actually presented it in that. And we just It was just like, how the hell did you Brilliant. do that? It was amazing. <laughs> but yeah, so mix it up, do a bit of everything, learn about learning styles, learn about different personality types um, so that you can then adapt. And yeah, is that different? Yeah, that probably is different from, from how it was because we're more appreciative of people, I think in the last four or five years, I think that's one thing COVID has done for us, Mm. that we are more willing to accept 
that we are all different, we handle things differently. It's sort of it, within a microcosm, we got that opportunity kind of to see. Kind woke people it. up to sort yeah. of pop your head out your own bubble every now and then, make sure someone's all right. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. 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 And that feeds into then that that you know the mental health piece and kind of. Um, but then an empathy piece as well with clients and candidates. Because again, I mean, we used to say to, obviously we, I used to say to my staff all the time, look, just, when you, just because you've put the candidate through the interview, they've got the job offer, and they told you that they would accept that salary and so on and so forth, don't be wounded or gutted when they say, I oh, can I have a think about it over the weekend, mm. you know? Like, understand that. That's a big decision for them, yeah. you know? It's life, life changing. Yeah, but also kind of when you've got somebody that's sitting there, like I, I did a lot with, with we had a, um, a situation with a candidate who was sort of like telling my consultant, I think he sussed that my the, the, the consultant was a little bit maybe green, wet behind the ears, maybe didn't understand how the, the mortgage market worked or whatever, right? And, and he, That's pestle, yeah. He took advantage of it because yeah. he was like, no, look, you know, um, I have to have uh, a salary of 85. And he was like, no, okay, now I understand that. But when we spoke about the job, you said you were on 70 and that this role paying 80 would be great. He's like, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, it has to be a salary of 85. He was like, why? My mortgage advisor has told me that it has to be 85. And yeah. he was like, oh, okay. Just give me a second. He's like, Liam, his mortgage advisor has told him it should be 85. And I was like, right, do you want me to deal with it or you? He's like, I'd like to, fine. Mm. Ask him what he means by that. And he's like, well, I'm going for a mortgage at the minute um, and, and I, it has to be 85. And I was like, okay, cool. So just find out. Um, just inform him then that if he does leave and start new employment, he won't have three months pay slips. Yeah. So is he putting his house per purchase off for three months? And he went, no, no, I moved in six months ago. And I was like... Was he remortgaging? What's going on? I was like, let me have a chat with him. Yeah. And, we, and he was like, yeah, no, I moved in six months ago. My mortgage advisor said, you can't take a, you can't take a, a new job unless it's for 85 grand. And I was like... But you're on but 70 why? <laughs> why? And he was like, because the mortgage company could threaten to take the house away. And I was like... Okay. Okay. Either one or two things is happening here. Mm. Either your mortgage advisor is lying to you or you want 85 and you can't think of a, a reason short of making up this entire story, right? Be real. What's the situation? He was like, I saw an advert from another agency for the same job saying that they were paying up to 85. Uh -huh. So I want 85. Yeah. And I was like, well, say that then. Yeah, because that's right? understandable. Okay, we can work with that. Yeah. What I can't work with is my bullshit made up mortgage advisor has told me that my mortgage company will take my house off me. And, yeah. and he come off the phone and, and, and Tom bless him, he come over and he was like, oh, I really appreciate that. I was really struggling with that one. And I was like, but Tom, I know you haven't bought a house and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You should know how these things work. If I'm going for a finance application, you should know that I'm going to need three months worth of pay slips. And if yeah. I'm starting a new job, I'm not going to have three months of pay slips. Also, you should know he said he's on 70 already. So mm -hmm. as long as he doesn't take a job under that 70, yeah. it shouldn't affect his mortgage application if it's an application. Hmm. Because you need to be aware of these sorts of things because otherwise people are going to run rings around you. But actually, like, you know, it's just important to be able to help other people out sometimes, you know? Because actually it might have been that he's got some weird mortgage advisor that's like gassing him about us. Yeah, yes, so it could have know? been another totally yeah. different story. I think that was really helpful for me. Having another career before I came into recruitment, yeah, I was a, fi a financial advisor. So I, 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 did, uh, <laughs> I did six and a half years in retail banking and went from financial advisor. I didn't do my CMAP and CFA because they changed it through the RDR and went down the management route instead, which I fucking hated. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mistake. But I did that. Yeah, I used to sell kind of like... Um, Credit Suisse investment accounts and then yeah. refer things over to like um, qualified financial advisors and stuff. See, this will blow your mind. You didn't have to be qualified when I joined. I was at that crossover point. That's when it started. They it brought was, the FSA in, yeah. the, the, the qualification, and that's what I used to train people in. So I started training uh, oh. in relation to that. But yeah, sort of mid, mid, mid 80s or so, you could just sell people mortgages, yeah. pensions. I sold my dad a bond the week before the 87 crash. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why you need to have that knowledge of what's going on in the world. Yeah, now, yeah. Whether, whether we would have known that, oh, that, that's something that's come out from, the, from this week. So we've done economics this week on hiring happenings and we're doing a blog post to go with each one. So last month on politics, I got a, 
a politics student from Birmingham, so she's 21, she's just about to graduate with a first, fingers crossed, mm. to write about the youth in politics. And mm-hmm. because it's, it is brilliant that actually they are actually more interested. They're than so much more interested we than, than my generation yeah. were, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But do you know about the panic of 1825? I hope I've got the date right. 1825, no. Yeah, <laughs> strangely, no. Yeah. Well, have you heard of the Wall Street crash in yeah. 1929? Yeah. So you've heard of that. It wasn't even our country. No. But the panic, 1825, I've only learned about this this week from this blog post, took down 12 banks in the UK. <laughs> it, it was a Scottish uh, guy in the forces that went over to South America, made up a country and got people to invest in it. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm reading it and I'm thinking, this is just nuts. So people are investing in it. He got 250 people to go over there to actually start this new country and all the rest of it. It was a load of rubbish. It's in, it, all it was was a jungle. Half of them died. <laughs> no, we're laughing. That's I know. So it's like, <laughs> and it just caused a massive crash. And it, it took out all the banking system, took down 12 banks because of this one guy pretending that there was a new country to invest in and just making it up all along. But Amazing. I've never heard that story. No. So that's what I love as well. Because Okay, yeah, we do the economics. We talked about mortgage rates and wage inflation and how that's had impact on, on the interest. But then I learned something about like that and I just think, yeah, every day's a learning day. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always fun to, like, especially little like tidbits of stuff like that that you can chuck in. I used, to, I, I used to kind of listen out for stuff like that or go searching through Reddit posts for like weird and wonderful stories yeah. um, to sit and talk to clients about because then you'd be that little bit more memorable rather than that agency like saying, when are you next hiring? And uh, when did you last hire? Yeah, see, yeah. That, see that's always what I've been trained and, and what I pass on. You never start with recruitment because you don't know where they feel, how they feel about it. You may piss them off in that first yeah. sentence. So you do your research, you find something interesting to them. Yeah. So what would be of interest to them? So if you can't find anything that's a bit weird and wacky, then you go with something you've seen on their LinkedIn that's relevant to them. Maybe it's mm-hmm. someone you know that works with them or something about the company. Do some research, find out what's going on to then be able to bring that up. I used to always sentence. have a theory that if 90% of your client meeting was just shit chat, and 10% was business, it's gone. That's that's the ideal. Shit chat, come shit on, chat. you're going to have to explain that because I'm, I'm, I'm just, not on board just, with the shit just, chat. Just, you know, chewing the fat over something or another. This happened, that happened, oh, that's brilliant, that's funny. What you got to do with that? See, I can't get on board with that. Because, really? I, yeah. to, I mean, a lot. I mean, I, I, I won a client once with the, um, with the story about Wojciech, the Polish war bear. And spent most, we just spent most of the time talking about that and how fascinating that story was about how the, this, this Polish platoon had adopted this bear from the circus, from Russian circus, and it basically ended up carrying their ammunitions and living with them, and eventually, like, when they came under siege, he was sort of protecting them, and, yeah. like, he then ended up living out his days in Scotland in the Scottish Zoo. Oh, wow. Yeah, which I thought was fascinating, and they've got, like, a, there's, like, a, a statue to him and everything. And I was like, why are people not... To, teach me that in school, but, you know? Yeah. But I, I wouldn't even talk... Because she was like... You wouldn't be sat in front of me if you didn't know how to recruit, right? Yeah. Well, you what know. you're recruiting for isn't... It, well, yeah, but that was kind of her opinion. But yeah. she was just like, I like you. You're, you're, you're like, you've engaged me for the last half an hour, 45 minutes, so, rather than pitched at me. Yeah, so you've got four main personality types, and she was the one that would go with the shit chat. Mm-hmm. But there is one of the opposites, like the, the high Ds, that are just like, what are you selling me? Okay, you've got five minutes tell me why I should need to use you, and they're just straight to business. So you've got to adapt. And that's but they're not like that in their personal lives, are they? No, they are. They're not, not coming home and going, what's no, for are. dinner? No, they are. What time is dinner? And I'll be there. You know? <laughs> I mean, no They're one's... not going to the pub and going, right, four Stellas, that table. But, you, know, you know people that do that? No. Oh, okay, I do. I, but if I do know people <laughs> that do that, I call them out for it. Yeah, what are you but, doing? That's, but that's just their personality. No, you don't, but, it's, but no, it's not always that. Out. Nobody is a robot like that all day long. I, I no, can't, no, I can't, no, no I, one's, I won't believe that. No one's 100%. And what I find is that when you've got people that are on a pedestal like that, so senior senior managers, directors or whatever that, that, that act and react like that. No, no, it doesn't yeah. have to be. Well, when you've got a hiring manager that like that, if you then kind of bow down to that and like, okay, I've got five minutes, let me pitch to you in my no, five no, no. minutes. You meet them and say, right, if I've got five minutes, I want to say four things and these are the key elements and this is why you should use it. So, you know, you, you stand up to them. You don't bow down. 
because actually... But, you, but, but, people, but you're staying within those five minutes, so you're not bowing down, bowing down anyway. No, because at the end of the five minutes, you say, right, okay, you said five minutes, that's my five minutes out, do you think it's worth another five minutes? I still feel subservient, do you think? because you're going because they've said I've gone, you've listen, only I've got, got five half an minutes. hour booked into your diary and you're saying you've, we've only got five minutes oh that's different if you booked it and it was half an hour that's fine but if you turn up is it, yeah I guess this is it because in my head I'm like how the fuck have I got five minutes with an FD no, I'm talking about on the phone and things like right. that oh yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, yeah. they might just say right okay five minutes go for it yeah no the, 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 yeah no so a, a BD call absolutely no that's not for me that's not 90% shit chat I have 10%. turned up to a client meeting where I haven't confirmed the time because we didn't have diaries and things like that I've just booked the start time yeah. and they've seen me in reception and said right 10 minutes oh we've, yeah we've all like, that, we? yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> I did a mince pie drop off I, I was like right mince pie drop off so we're going to do it it was great I would go out I'd spend all day dropping off mince pies to these clients and they'd give me vacancies and I'll come back with like I've got 10 requisitions this week yeah. and then I was like right well, I finally got in with this big client big client national grid it was and I was like yes Yes, we can get down there. Get down there with the mince pies. And I'm like, I'm here to see like Carl, or whatever his name was. And she's like, yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, Carl, I've got somebody in reception for Mark Page. She, yeah, yeah, no worries. He sends down the intern, like, the, like some in- apprentice. And she's like, oh, yeah, you said you got some mince pies for Carl. And I was like, yeah, where is he? Oh, he's just busy. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to give you these. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go back to my office yeah. and go, <laughs> they took my mince pies. Well, we're coming up to my favourite time of the year, it was, as, as, as recruiters, was Easter egg run. Easter egg run, oh, yeah. Easter egg run. So, I don't know if Thornton still do it, but they used to be able to put our logo, they would write it oh, on I the front of the it. egg. The egg was still two quid, but it's not that now. No. Um, but you could, you could you have could, your yeah, name or whatever, whatever on the top, that didn't cost anything. So we would go, right, can we have 50? <laughs> 100 quid, that's what it yeah. was, but that's 50 Personal companies numbers, yeah. that you've dropped off and they've gone, wow, thanks. And if you didn't get to see them, you would leave it the afternoon, but then if they didn't call or say something, you would ring them the next day, so just yeah. to check that no one nicked it on the way up to your office sort of thing. But we used to get so much business out of that. So again, are people thinking laterally? Are they looking at different ways to do it? And I'm not necessarily saying the old ways are the best ways, I'm just talking about no, different but ways. There are there are ways to adapt the old ways into today, right? Because you could still do any, right, do you know what? We're going to do six mince pie drop-offs today and get, get some time in for right? Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> or like Easter egg drop-offs, right? We're well, going to do six of those. Or coffee drop-off in first thing, yeah. And what we used to do is we used to jump in the car and we used to go and do them, right? Mm. But, okay, it's 2024 now, so why are you not recording the journey, vlogging it, <laughs> You know, I walked in with. Yeah, you did, yeah. And I'm sat there on TikTok, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm creating my TikTok as I'm walking in and doing but the like, journey. This is it, right? In, yeah, because it's an opportunity. Vlog it, do this with it, do that with it. Yes. And, and it's sort of like there's so much more that you could do with that. Because then that's oh that God. little marketing thing that you've done, that little activity yeah. you've done for those six clients, you're now going to share on LinkedIn to yes. thousands of people. And yes. they'll go, do you know what? I wish fucking Angela would drop. Uh, you know, drop okay, off well, let me give you this me. one. If it's too late for Easter, it's not. Do it. Um, Wimbledon week. Right. The, the, the final week of Wimbledon, we would go at the weekend and pick the strawberries. So it would be a Sunday afternoon thing, team building. Right. And obviously, the company would pay for the strawberries. They get some to take home as well. But it was fun. We enjoyed it. And then we would buy baskets from a cheap shop. What's, what's the main big one that everyone loves? I can't remember. Anyway. Hobby Craft. So, like that. Yeah, no, even cheaper yeah. than that. That, but you'd get a little wicker basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or oh, like the range or something like that. Yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Even cheaper. Um, Good on, where are you going? <laughs> there, there is a place that people love. And I need I've, a new wicker basket. I've only right. been a couple of times, but it is amazing. It's this massive shop in Hemel. If you know, it's the one that was Woolworths. So think of the size of a Woolworths. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's that size. We're just stuff for houses. It's probably got home in the name. Home bargains. Oh, maybe it is. There we go. That's the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Wicker basket, all your strawberries, little pot of clotted cream, mm-hmm. and take those out to the clients. So again, like you say, you, you, you're vlogging it as you're going on, so you've got you picking it right the way yeah, through. That's it. And then maybe but if you make... A, you could run a, a competition, right? Yeah. You could go, right, we're going to put a poll out. All these people are going to respond to it. We're going to pick three people to win these baskets, and we're going to personally drop them oh, off. We would do 50. And we're going to Every record we the entire process yeah. and put that out, which then drives more people to go, oh, the next time they run a thing like that, I'm going to vote, and I'm going to give them my details, and I'm yes. going to sign up to whatever they're, they're, whatever they're peddling, because I, I, might get a, you know, I might get a freshly picked basket of strawberries. That's cool. Like, don't ever... In, and I always say this, like, 
don't ever underestimate the simplicity of like and the human nature of your prospects. Yeah. Like we have this thing about like, you know, no, they're not going to fall for that. It's not about falling for something. Everybody wants something. Everybody wants value. Yeah, but and if you give somebody just some form of value, yeah. they appreciate it. It's, it's not the value of it. It's the human touch. So I had a client that... But that's I, still value because for some people that means... Yeah, that you're right. They, they may, value they that may more not than get anything that else. At work yeah. or at home or anywhere. And if you're the one that shows that bit of humanity to them, that could tip them over the edge, couldn't it? But I, yeah, I have one client. Well, they weren't a client. I've been trying to get them for so long. Um, getting nowhere, getting nowhere. So we were just trying different things and they, they moved office. So I sent them a bunch of flowers. Welcome to your new office. And she rang up and said, I've just had these flowers delivered. I said, great, are they lovely? Are they nice? She's like, yeah. Said, what, why, why have you sent them to me? I never take your calls. I'm interested in the rest of it. I said, because you've moved offices. And yeah, I would like to do business with you. And therefore, I'm not the type of person that gives up. And it was that that made the difference. Right. It's, it's that persistence. Now, not, not stalking, not being really annoying, all the rest of it. So, the little it's, it's flowers, demonstrating it's a tra- Yeah, but it's demonstrating a trait that, that, you're, that your prospect is going to look at and be like, yeah. Yeah, oh, she did. Fair. You know. Yeah, she used us then from there on in. Because you've shown a little bit of humanity. Again, little touches that cost 15 quid. Mm-hmm. That something that just on the desk. And it, We've, we're missing a little bit of that. I was a little bit worried that AI and automation were, would make it even worse. But actually, some, some research that's come out this week uh, from a company, they've seen the speed up and the ability and all the touch points that it's been able to give them yeah. has actually increased their candidate experience. They're getting better feedback mm-hmm. on that. I work with a company mm-hmm. called Recruiter Insider. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you know Justin Hillier. He's just moved over here to the UK. So they started in Melbourne. I met him in a castle in the Cotswolds film and a TV show. Another story. But <laughs> I've worked with him for like the last must be six years or so now. But that candidate experience and getting real honest feedback from mm. them um, is so critical. And again, it then got expanded to clients. It's referrals. It, it's an amazing system. So go, go check it out. But what is it? That we're doing for those little touch points we used to call it the candidate care plan mm. so from from the people that you're working with how are you looking after them especially if you're running a temps desk we had 1500 temps out our team of team of six yeah Did a lot of temps so doing things to make them feel like individuals and not a number was really important yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's it's it is it lost or is it that we know these things as business leaders but the climate and the economy that we're in at the minute, we're just heads down, survive, get through this. But the automation means it do- doesn't have to cost you anything. No, it doesn't anything. have to. No. So things, I mean, yes, we used to send birthday cards and Christmas cards. Well, they can all be automated now. Mm-hmm. And they're, yeah, they're, you've got the data, it's sat there. Exactly. And, yeah. So there's no reason and you can create it yourself in Canva or whatever yeah. and, and send it out and get it set up. Those little touches... Yeah. Not gonna, take a bit of time, maybe, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. I used to say this to to um, our guys that that sort of, you know, record a personal message, mm. right? You want to email this candidate because they're a temp and they've not done this, or they need to do that, or you've got something that you need to update them with. Rather than send an email, we've got we had an interview, and I was like, you got an interview, just send them a, send them a video message, mm. let them see you, because then they'll be like, oh, that was nice, yeah, yeah, and they'll watch it and they'll respond to it, yeah. And the response rates used to be perfect on video because it was different, but because it was sort of like personalised difference, you know? Yeah, that, that's a difference as well. I remember Hinterview do, doing, I used to be co-chair of the Recruitment Society and we'd put on events every month and Hinterview come in, oh, it's got to be 10, 12 years ago, and everyone was like, whoa, okay, wait a minute, what's, what's all this? And you're now getting people that would have said, never, 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 you're getting me in front of a camera actually looking at what people are doing going, I could do that I could probably do that better as well why not give it a go and I wouldn't be doing this yeah I, I, if you'd have said to me four years ago you're going to have a podcast and you're going to have you know this many thousand subscribers on YouTube and blah 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 and I'd be like no not a fucking chance really not a chance yeah I used to hate being on like I okay. used to hate listening to my voice like, yeah there is that still but <laughs> we get, yeah, yeah. got to get over yeah. it but it, it, yeah. yeah whereas now my, my viewpoint is uh, you know I am what I am <laughs> yes it's yeah. up to you to like it or not. No. That's, <laughs> that's the difference, isn't it? We're accepting who we are. Yeah. We moved forward so much with... But I think that's fed in from that yeah. mental health thing that you yeah, said. Yeah, it is. There's this acceptance of 
people are just people, you know. Yeah. Just let people be people. Celebrate people's successes. Like I really, I've, I've got. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older, but like I get really put out now when you know on LinkedIn, you know, back in Adam, we were on the tools and we were in, in on desks. We'd always have this theory or we'd have this mindset of like, don't bash your competitor. Like, don't sit there and be like, we're Michael Page, we're better than Robert Half because Robert Half is shit. Like, because it's not the right way to do business. No, right? never not. I, I, I feel exactly that, but much stronger now when I hear, when I see other recruiters bashing recruiters on LinkedIn. You know, like making fun of like, oh, th- this recruiter's done this and what an idiot and how dare they do it. And it's sort of like, just be better, you know. Do you know what you could do? You could message that person and be like, hey, mate, I've just had one of your candidates get in touch with me and say you did this, this and this. Yeah. That's poor. Yeah. Don't do that again. Yeah. You know, this is how you made the candidate feel. Yeah. Don't... Like, that's helping constructively giving somebody sort of like, advice, right? Yeah. P- people do get <laughs> constructive advice from me, but I will do it privately. It will be a yeah. pri- private message to them. I remember learning that in um, when I first became a manager, the one minute manager. Yeah. Good old, I'm, I'm actually a Ken Blanchard train, trainer as well oh. for situational leadership. But it always sat with me that sort of praise in public, but you, you, yeah. you take it private if it's there. And the same again with people's profiles. If I can see that there's maybe there's spelling mistakes, things like that. I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to spelling mistakes, but there's so many people that are dyslexic in recruitment that again, they wouldn't have spotted it. They're looking at it, it looks right to them. So there's always a little message. But there's also say, like, there's if you want to change it. Yeah, but there's, there's, there's enough it. tech out there to like, yeah, you know, d- yeah. to pick these things up. It's, it's one of those where it's like, why does it bother you? Like, you know, Joe, mm. like I, I, I will, I mean, I, admittedly, on purpose, I do this every now and then. I'll intentionally like have the subtitle say something slightly different or whatever. Because it, every now and then, it then it just, prompt people to comment or message me or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking um, about like their title, recruitment consultant, oh, and yeah. recruitment's spelt wrong. And I'm yeah. thinking, you're Good just Lord. doing yeah. yourself in. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't get your own title yeah, spelled yeah, correctly, yeah. That's you, you're going to struggle. So that'll be a little message saying, you've missed the R out recruitment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an R, yeah. Idiot. <laughs> no, because I mean... Well, what you could do is screenshot it, put it on LinkedIn as a post, <laughs> talk so about how myself. stupid recruiters are, and get a load of clout off the back of it. Well, I always yeah. laugh because... I, I think my typing is dyslexic. I know I'm not, but I always type consultant Cons- <laughs> every single time. So if I was typing it in there, yeah, that could you, be a totally different... You're the worst thing I ever did. <laughs> I sent the client best retards instead of best retards <laughs> and sent it. It was like, how do I record an email? How the fuck do I record an email? <laughs> that came up this week on Outlook that you can recall. I mean, you've been able to recall for ages, but it never yeah. seemed to really work. But they've prompted that as what's new in an update this week. Yeah, I'm struggling yeah, yeah, yeah. with it. It, it used to work. In, it, basically, it would work if it hadn't been opened yeah, and even looked it. at. But yeah. then ever since sort of push notifications and stuff, it's like messing up. Because if it comes through to my phone and I can see it and I can preview half the message, well, then they can't be recalled. They can't do it, yeah. And so, yeah, yes. they've been working on that for a while. But yeah, yeah, best retards... My worst with no, it wasn't a worst with a client, but it did, did make me smile. Was talking to one for 10 minutes, having a great conversation. First time I spoke to him, and then go, Love you, as I put the phone down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah we've, we've, it was an yeah. interesting conversation. We've done the, the love yous one. a few times, uh, where, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In our, our business, that happened a few times. But that probably would be acceptable now because people do say, I, lo- uh, I love listening to my dad, he's 85, and his best mate is my, is my age, he's known him since. He was 15 or so. So, yeah, they've been, like, best mates for 40 years. And there's, like, a 30-year 30, 30 um, age difference with them. But they now say, at the end, love you. Hmm. These two blokes. And I just look at it and I just think, that's so lovely that that's now changed, that people can open up and say what they actually feel. Whereas we've always been... And I'm thinking about the recruitment industry and, and things like this as well. Because people were always guarded. Oh, can we edit that? Can we take that out? I had an example last week. I won't say who it was, but afterwards went, can you just take that bit out? And I'm like, and she said, am I overthinking it? And I'm like, yeah, you are, but I'll do it. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. If it means that much to you, fine. But exactly. Really, it's going to yeah. make you feel comfortable. But don't worry about it. No, it's, no. it's, yeah, it's, it's Yeah, the, 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 the lobby thing is a big one. Um, I've got uh, my wife's uncle. He suffers really bad with mental health and that kind of thing. Um and and sort of in recent years he started coming to me for a lot of like kind of work advice and he was having a real hard time at work and that kind of thing and just in passing about six or eight months ago 
He's just in passing, like, because he'd come up, turned up to our house, really just distraught, right? You know, and we talked him off a ledge and like, yeah, it's all right, yeah. it's all right, don't worry. And I was like, oh, anyway, don't worry, Dave. Um, like, you know, go to work, do this, do that, ask for a meeting with HR and you'll be fine. He's like, all right, cheers, thanks, Nate. So I can't know, we just love you. And like, sort of sent him on his way. And, he, and then um, the day after, he rang me up, he's like, hello, Nate, uh, talking to him, talking to him, talking to him. He's like, all right, anyway, love you. Oh, I love it. And then I, I was like, yeah, well, I love you too, Dave. And then every single time he'll ring my wife, he'll go, Chloe, tell me and I said, I love you. And then so that little thing has made a massive difference to him because he's like, I can say I love you to men, like it's okay. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's okay. And, and it was reciprocated and it wasn't weird and I felt comfortable with oh, it. And he does it all the time though. He'll come up to, he rang me earlier actually while I was setting the podcast up and he's like, oh, I've had that paperwork come through. When you get a chance, come around. Yeah, yeah I'll sort it out. Don't worry. Cool. All right. Love you then. No 10. And I'm like, it's oh, a real yeah. confident yeah. love you as well, yeah, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah. I'm guessing that's black country, but. Uh, no, no, Scottish. no. He's just really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do it from that. But, but isn't that wonderful? So yes, we can do that in recruitment and we can do it on video. We can do it with our candidates and our clients. We can mess up and go, yep, yeah, that was me. What an idiot. Okay. And I think that's hopefully made it more comfortable for people in our industry because there were yeah. so many that would hide in the backgrounds and would be scared and worried and, oh my God, I've made this mistake and would, wouldn't say anything. Yeah. And then it po- would come out Posting later. anxiety is a big thing for a lot of people because not because they're scared of what they say or what they want to post isn't going to have any value or any credibility. What they're, what they're petrified about is that they're going to get vilified for a spelling error or making the wrong reference or you know, do you know what I mean like because of the amount of kind of negativity and yeah that just yeah I, I know it's not really talking about recruiter training as such mm. but it really grates on me when recruiters bash other recruiters yeah it's bad enough as it is right you know it, it, the, the industry's already got quite a negative outlook it's we don't, like, we don't need be to be better. knocking each other down no, do we? just be better help each other you yeah know? if you see something then you're like oh, I don't really agree with that tell them but tell them in a, like, because tell them because you want to help, yeah. not because you like you want to feel good about yourself for a day or two, you know? That that has changed actually. One of the people when I was thinking about hiring happenings last last year, the first person that I wanted to talk to was Mitch Sullivan. Yeah. And the reason being is because I wanted people to be honest. I wanted people to say what they thought. I wanted there to be disagreements if they if they didn't agree mm-hmm. and then we talk it through like adults and have that conversation and listen to people's opinions and I thought you know what who's the most outspoken person yeah. I know yeah, 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 yeah. Mitch Sullivan so I, I did speak to him and uh, talked talk through it and he said you know what he said even I've changed on that because I would put stuff out there knowing that it would push buttons and that it would get people talking and that was sort of the, the social media approach wasn't it it yeah. was yeah say Contra- something controversy controversial. creates cash yeah exactly yeah. He said, but we've got past that now. Yeah. We're, we're not in that. We can just have these different opinions. And yeah, it's, and it, this, it, is, this is something that's got lost, isn't it, in, yeah. in sort of the, the, the social media world and, and kind of has filtered into recruitment where it's sort of like, you're allowed to think this and I'm allowed to think this. That's okay. Yeah. You know, we're allowed to have different opinions. It's not your responsibility to convince me that, you know, AI is bad and it's not my job to convince you that AI is good. Hmm. We can both agree that we have different views on it and it's fine. Yeah. You know? You do your thing, I do my thing, we'll be all right, you know? But yeah, yeah, Mitch is a funny one. He's, um, yeah, I remember I had a, a Teams with him before he came on the podcast. Uh, and at the end, I was just like, I thought you were a knob. I'm going to be honest, I thought you were a twat. <laughs> but actually, you're really, you're, but that's you're what all he was right. going for. Yeah, but he, and he was like, same. <laughs> He's like, same, I'm looking forward to coming on now. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but, but yeah, because well, the first time I met him was was in a bar after an event or something, and I thought, wait a minute, no, you're you're yeah. not what I was expecting. You're not that go- yeah, yeah. He's got but then, some- like, you can't expect. What's he going to do? What stand in a bar in a corner on him by himself? Listen into other people's conversations. You'd be like, you're an idiot for thinking that. Like, you know, oh, you mispronounced that word. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? You're not, you, no one could be a social media troll in real life. It just doesn't work. That's, that, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it, isn't it? Yeah, all these uh, people that sort of hide behind their keyboards. But, it, it, I mean, it's a fascinating time. One to, one to be in recruitment yeah. with everything that's going on. I mean, yes, we're technically in recession. This is my fourth one now. But it doesn't feel 
anything like any of the others. I'm going to be honest, Angela. We, like, I don't remember coming out of the last recession. Like, we, went in, we went into a recession in 2008. I still feel like I'm in it. Oh, no, the last one was COVID. We did actually get yeah, into no, it. Yeah, no, see, for me, no, I didn't come out of that. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. We, had, we had 10 years of growth. It was 10 years of, like, full on. Yeah, you and, might have done. Okay. I was working for somebody at that time. I was making them, I was giving them the growth. Uh, maybe that was it. But what we did notice was because it was quite easy during that time, we've now got people in the industry that have got 10 to 15 years without BD skills. Yeah. And that has just been shocking to mm-hmm. see because it's such a critical part of the business. Well, it's not, obviously, because we, we had that time where when, it, when we're on a growth, yeah. you don't need it so much. But there's so many companies that... Great, great businesses, great clients, but of course, if they're not recruiting, they've just not got the skills to be able to go out and get some new ones. So that mm. that we've been pushing that for nearly two years now because we knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, so everything was sourcing, sourcing, and we're like, okay, yeah, but next year it's going to be BD. So start training yeah. them now Good. because they won't get it. And we we had this conversation before we started, didn't we? That I get to work with the best in the industry. Yeah. Because they're willing to pay. To train and develop and to work on their businesses. And they're willing to invest in the, in fixing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you're always going to see the, the yeah. I, 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 I know I have a very skewed view of our industry because, yeah, the, the, the companies that we get to work with are, are willing to change, to adapt, to move, mm. to, to make a difference. Um, but you don't necessarily always see that. No, no, I don't. No, yeah. Mm. Because, yeah, yeah. I, but I see the um, startup SME... Um, recruiter who's struggling who cash flow is an issue and getting through month to month is an issue and winning new business means stopping doing something else and focusing on you know what I mean and sort of the the plate spinners that are trying to get to that size but you know are are killing themselves in that time and that's where I kind of like try to sort of focus my energy to support is yeah I can I can help kind of ease that burden by you know is you, are you paying out for things you shouldn't be? You know, are you using your tech stack properly? Are yeah. you, you know, if you've got the best suppliers, you know, if not, then I can introduce you to those people. That's that's my place there in is, the industry. I there think. is so much help out there. I mean, yeah, one, we offer seven free courses that we've created over the, the last four years. There's over 400 sessions in, in those that Amazing. people okay. that just yeah. get access to. So therefore, yeah, if you haven't got an account in the recruiting gym, go to there and just pick one. And then we'll add the others on for you so you can go do all of them. Uh, I'm also part of a group that got set up last year through Simplicity. So there's nine companies. So a bank, um, an insurance company, a mm-hmm. finance company, um, and training development, etc. So we all help and support startups as well. And they get a free, not free, they get, they get insights and information and support from all those different areas that they're going to need yeah, okay. um, from those companies. So that startup hub as well, they say they don't have to do it on their own, but the thing is, do you know where to go? Exactly. That's always going to be the problem. Mm. And that's kind of the starting point, isn't it? But yeah, cool. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. This has been really fun. I've really enjoyed good place it. To, to wrap it up. Um, is there anything you want to plug, anything you want to, to sort of, I mean, you mentioned your, your free training courses, so I'll, try, I'll, I'll tag those in in kind of as many posts as we can on um, sort of when this goes out. Anything yeah, I mean, we're, we're here to support the industry. Yes, of course, we, we, we've got the training, the consulting, the, the management consultancy, the coaching, yeah. stuff that we charge for. But, um, yeah, I'd rather plug the, the free courses and get, get people in there and get them resources. Mm-hmm. What I will plug is the Recruitment Agency Expo next month because one of our sessions that we do, My Life in Recruitment, we're taking live on stage. Amazing, okay. So I've got Ruella Crouch from Ruella, yeah. Ruella James. She's I've got a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Narita Rooney, who won the in-house recruitment manager of the year last oh, year. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I've got I've got Rectorec, I've got in-house, I've got Sashin Ruparelia from Camino Partners, so yeah. back office, and then I've got Hung Lee, so tech IT. So I've, hopefully I've covered the the whole industry nice board, with yeah, with the five yeah. of us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, c- certainly that's going to be an interesting one. So my life in recruitment. Oh, good. Come along with people that have been there, done it. Amazing. Thank you very much for coming on today. My pleasure. This has been really good. Cool.